before you press submit on your medical school application, you need to watch this video. Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. It's your girl, Aaliyah Mead. For those of you who do not know me, I'm a rising medical school student interested in dropping some keys to success along my journey to help you guys get into medical school. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing some well-needed advice that I think every pre-med student needs to hear before pressing submit on their application. So go ahead and get comfortable, get you a pen and paper, and let's get to it. Okay, so you know we gotta break this thing down first before we jump into the, the, the meat of our discussion. Pre-medical students have three options in terms of three options in terms of applying to medical school and using an application service. The most commonly known is the AMCAS, the A-M-C-A-S. That application service is going to service the majority of the schools that are allopathic medical schools. So those are the schools that are going to afford a doctor and MD degree. Now, when you're talking about MD schools specifically in the state of Texas, you're going to complete an additional application if you're a pre-medical student interested in those schools. That application acronym is TMDSAS. So that's going to be for the Texas Medical and Dental School Application Service. That's essentially what it means. Now your third option, if you're interested in the DO route, if you're interested in getting your degree in osteopathic medicine, you're going to use an application service with the acronym AACOMAS. Okay, so each of those three application services are going to be asked for the following information. Your biographical information, which is just like the boring stuff like your name, how old you are, your birth date, where you live, all that good stuff. Now there is some spicy things in there like a background check and your criminal history and any institutional action like getting kicked out of school that may have occurred in your past. But generally speaking, all of those application services are going to be asking for that biographical information. Just kind of laying down the foundation before they jump into more about you. The next portion of all of those applications will be your educational background so they're going to be requesting to know the schools that you've attended the transcripts the grades you're gonna to have to report all of that information after that they need to start building a picture of who you are so they're gonna be asking you about your work and activities work and activities is like a broad spectrum term that pretty much encompasses everything that you've done academically extracurricular wise research actual work like employment history and anything that falls in between that community service all those things so the work and activities portion is a big big component of each of those applications also another key section of your application is going to be your most meaningful activities or most meaningful experience section this is the section of the application on each of these application services that's going to be really trying to dig deeper and understand out of everything that you've provided in your application what are those highlights of your work and activities that most readily define you or have most readily transformed you into someone who's worthy of entering into medical school and into the medical profession and you are going to be expected to provide a personal statement no matter which way you go so be ready for that they're going to ask you about your MCAT scores any type of standardized testing that you've taken or any upcoming testing dates for any standardized testing that needs to be used to allow you into a medical school and finally you will have to select which schools you're going to send the application to so at the end of all of these applications you're going to have to pay to send it off and you will have a section where you'll just confirm your submission and then it gets sent off. Now after it gets sent off all of these application processes will be verifying your application before it then gets pushed to all of the medical schools that you apply to. So in a nutshell that is the description of the primary application process and the anatomy of the primary application. Okay so wow I've been talking for a minute about the anatomy of the application and I seem to have forgotten an important component of each of these applications you will be expected to provide letters of recommendation now the number that you have to provide and the type varies by school that you're interested in so please make sure you are using online resources or contacting these schools directly in order to understand what type of letters of recommendation will be sufficient for their application process now let's hop into the advice that I would tell myself and any other pre-medical student currently engaged in the primary application process all right so as I mentioned before at the beginning of the 
this video. Today, we are just going to have a conversation. It's going to be a little less instructional. And I'm really going to talk to you guys as if I were talking to myself when I was applying to medical school last year. So the first tip that I have for you, you have to start your application as early as possible and submit your application as early as possible. Now, part of submitting your application early is understanding that the application process is time consuming. Medical school admissions committees have to sift through thousands of applications during each cycle. So those applications that are received first have a higher chance of being offered a seat in the medical class or at least an interview in comparison to their counterparts that are submitting them later and later into the application cycle. You need to really aim to submit your application no later than the first week of July. It really is about timing and when your application reaches your medical school of choice because you do have to get in line in front of or maybe even behind thousands of people who are interested in the same school as you. In order to help you with submitting early, it would be in your best interest to start early. The biggest way for you to start early is using another word processing system like Google Docs or Microsoft Word. Any type of word processing app that you can use to begin typing out like your working activities that you know you're going to provide, your most meaningful experiences, your personal statements. Start those things early even before you're actually able to type them into the application because if you start early then you increase your chances of being able to submit early. Okay now we're going to get into the meat of the application. So when you are doing your application you need to make sure that when you touch that work and activity section that you are not just writing lists about what you've done during your journey. You need to ensure that you are writing paragraphs and creating many stories when talking about everything that you've done whether it be research, community service, clinical experience, leadership experiences. You must craft a story every chance you get. What people are going to really focus on is your work and activity section because that's where you begin to come alive as an applicant. So I'm going to actually read a piece of my work and activity section just to show you exactly what I mean when it comes to writing paragraphs and not lists for your work and activities. I did list my experience being a TA for my Spanish 4 class. Now keep in mind on my resume I would have bullet points for this experience but on my medical school application I actually formulated what was in my resume into a cohesive paragraph. So here it goes. Experience description. While serving as the teacher assistant under a Spanish professor at Howard University I engaged in various secretarial and instructional roles all while demonstrating a working knowledge of the Spanish language. The position required me to grade and correct Spanish for exams, quizzes, and classwork assignments. During office hours I personally tutored students who needed assistance with the Spanish language. Lastly in class I aided my professor by helping with instruction. Inherently buried in the position was the requirement to read, write, listen, and speak at least an intermediate level of Spanish. This experience also increased my level of global cultural competency and appreciation for Spanish speaking cultures. So you see I took what was on my resume formulated it into some sort of conversation between me and the person reading my application and that's really going to give you guys the edge on another person who may have not taken the time and may have not put in the additional effort to create a narrative about the things that they've done. The work and activity section provides you a smaller text limit in comparison to your personal statement so it is going to be just a slight task to write out what you've done and reduce it and confine it to the word limit. However, I do highly encourage that you guys spend some time to actually do that. Okay, so the next thing that I would tell myself if I were completing my application right here, right now, today, I would tell myself to please make sure you focus on those most meaningful experiences. Now, the criteria in terms of selecting most meaningful experiences, you always want to keep in mind, what are those working activities that I provided that really changed who I am, how I look at the world, my trajectory in terms of my professional career, or which experiences did I have the most impact on those around? Me. Really want to think about the transformative nature of each of those experiences and then select the strongest ones to use as your most meaningful experiences. 
So for me, when I did select something for my most meaningful experiences, I didn't necessarily choose my teacher's assistant position for my most meaningful experiences. I actually chose my participation in the Summer Medical and Dental Education Program, previously called SMDEP. It's now most likely called SHPEP. It's just a whole immersive experience for a pre-med student. For me, my SMDEP experience at UCLA's medical school completely transformed my trajectory in terms of my path to medicine. So I definitely wanted to pull that out and elaborate more on how it helped me and then how I use the experience to help people around me. Okay, so I'm going to read my most meaningful experience paragraph and a half that I wrote for SMDEP. So let's read. Before the summer medical and dental education program, in parentheses, SMDEP, I had never stepped foot on the campus of a medical school. I never knew what it felt like to slip a white coat over my arms. However, I knew my interest in medicine ran deeper than my inexperience. Participation in SMDEP at UCLA marked my first official encounter with the realities of my dream to pursue medicine. SMDEP connected me with medical students and faculty and staff from the David Geffen School of Medicine. From interacting and observing these individuals, I learned about the character traits, work ethic, and discipline it takes to commit one's life to a medical career. SMDEP provided me with an opportunity to seek out answers to the countless questions I had about the field of medicine. I can Included my time at the program with a newfound focus on an understanding of the path before me. SMDEP kid started my path toward medicine and transformed me into an individual committed to making her dreams come true. With this, I am and forever will be grateful for the SMDEP experience. So with my experience description, I kept it just really short and sweet, really objective. I gave them a lot of key points about what I did. And then for my most meaningful, I reserved the bigger discussion about what it meant to me for my most most meaningful experience. So make sure you take that extra step and really focus on crafting your narratives for your most meaningful experiences. Be truthful during this application process. For pre-medical students, there is a lot of concern about being competitive and being your best self when it comes time to apply to medical school. And we can get caught up in the idea of looking at our next door neighbor who found a cure for cancer at age 15, and we're trying to be like that person. And if that's not our story, what that can lead us to is fabricating or exaggerating details in our experience. And that's the number one trap that I wanna encourage you to not fall into. Do not gas your application up because realistically, gas is flammable. And if you gas up this application, it can blow up big time in your face. Everything that you provide on your application from your work and activity section down to the grades that you'll have to report must be truthful because at every point in your application process, they are going to verify, double check, scan, fingerprint. They are going to really double down on making sure that you told the truth. Not only because that's a good character trait to practice but also because they truly want to know what you're about before they just give you a seat into a medical school and ultimately before they give you the opportunity to hold someone's life in your hands understand that your personal experiences do not need to be fluffed up any bit because your story is truly going to wow somebody out there so there is no need at any point to try to add any type of competitive edge to what your story is focus on you and be true to yourself. All right, so the second to last tip that I would tell myself is to make sure that you double check your work before you press submit on your application. Now, this also includes having other people in addition to yourself, including your mentors, advisors, friends, families, have them read over your application before you send it off because they're gonna wanna look for spelling errors, grammar errors, make sure that your formatting is correct, that you have the right word count and that your sentences are not cut off. So it's gonna take several rounds and several different sets of eyes to make sure your application is like to a T perfect. Afford yourself enough cushion time to have multiple people read through different sections of your application and for you to read through your application and make sure that not only are there not errors but that everything that you've pieced together functions in a way that paints a cohesive picture of who you are. Another thing that I would tell myself during my medical school application process and even beforehand is to secure my coins. Make sure my money is aligned before I get too deep into the application process and have some sort of hiccup when it comes time to press submit. When you are completing your application, completing it is virtually free. You know, they're not going to charge you to type your most meaningful experiences, essentially what I'm saying. But 
you can do all of that and then get to the end and when it's time to start selecting medical schools that's when you will start to see the true cost of this application in general depending on where you apply the average cost of selecting a medical school to send your application to is going to be about a hundred dollars plus or minus 25. keep in mind that if you're going to be applying to about 10 to 20 schools you need to budget for about a thousand to two thousand dollars that you need to provide for this application because of the costs that are associated with applying to medical school it really does limit the the probability that those of us from financially disadvantaged backgrounds have the opportunity to even get considered my biggest advice to all of you is, is to plan ahead and this planning to save up for applying to medical school can start as early as your freshman year as early as in high school but start setting aside money for you to be able to press submit on your application also looking at how you can use various preparatory programs and stipends that they are offering to save for this application process now if you are someone who is also looking for additional programs the double amc offers the fee assistance program fap in which you can provide some tax information from your parents information and i think about yourself and based on the algorithm that they use they will decide if you are deserving of some sort of reduction of costs for your application the fee assistance program in general diminishes the cost of the actual application process and it gives people from financially disadvantaged backgrounds the opportunity to be able to press submit and get considered for their white coat because realistically there are a lot of us who truly we have dreams beyond what we've seen we have dreams beyond what We've lived and money truly is a barrier to that so I would be remiss if I did not mention the fact that you need to get your coins together and get serious about saving and understand that money is something that you need to keep in the back of your head because you can do all that you need to do for the application but if you don't have the money then that can stop you from being able to press submit all right everyone that's it for today's video I hope this information was useful to help you perfect your application for medical school before you get back to ensuring that your application is at its best do me a favor and hit subscribe if you haven't already turn on your post notifications so you never miss another video like this one and share this video with anyone you know who needs that extra push to ensure their medical school application is at its best without further ado i wish you guys nothing but the best in your medical school application process and i hope to see you in my next video bye bye